This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth. For competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty. For the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Klayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. We have a very full show today. There's been a lot of news, a lot of things that Freedom Watch is doing that I'm doing. But things that are happening in the courts right now, as well as with regard to special counsel Robert Mueller, the Florida elections, the elections of so-called Republican leaders in the House of Representatives and the Senate this week, voting really poorly on the horizon for the Republicans actually doing anything, much less having President Trump uh, impeached and then a conviction trial in the U.S. Senate. But let's first start with something that happened just last Friday with a federal judge by the name of Timothy J. Kelly. He was appointed by President Trump, probably at the recommendation of Don McGahn, who was formerly White House counsel. McGahn is an establishment swamp creature. And it's what I've been telling you over all these many years, is that the leftist Democrat appointed judges are bad enough. But there are many Republican establishment judges that are almost as bad. And in this case, Kelly... He was a very nice man. You'll have a very nice impression of him if you sit in court and hear his demeanor. But he's essentially a panty waste. I mean, and what I mean is he has no guts. He's more like the cowardly lion than a tiger on the judicial bench. And last Friday, he issued a ruling which granted a request for temporary restraining order. That's preliminary relief by CNN, the communist slash Clinton news network ordering that the vile so-called reporter, Jim Acosta, get back his White House press credentials. Now, we know that Acosta improperly touched that female intern. I mean, it's on tape. There's no question about that. But we also know that his behavior for these last many years that President Trump's been in office has been, frankly, disgusting, disgraceful, disrespectful, and he's simply a clown that is trying to boost CNN ratings. So when the White House revoked his press pass, it wasn't that they were infringing First Amendment rights. First of all, there were no such rights to be present in the White House. But CNN was free to send another White House reporter, such as Michelle Kaczynski, who I've known for many years, who actually has class, you know, and, and respects the office of the president, or if not her, then somebody else. But Kelly succumbed to the pressure. And here's why he did. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about him in the past, too, is that these judges don't like to go up against large media conglomerates. In this case, CNN is owned by Time Warner, AT&T, huge. And they have the ability to trash this judge into the future, to criticize him, to keep him from a higher appointment, potentially, as they tried to do with Justice Kavanaugh. But also, there's a natural tendency in the Washington swamp to want to be a member of the club. And if you go up against a major major media organization, even CNN, you're no longer welcome in the Georgetown soirees and in the parties and everything like that. But it's also the nature of Judge Kelly. I had him on a case going back about a year. It's a case that I brought against Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch for interfering in one of my client relationships an individual by the name of Jose Basulto, who was the head of Brothers to the Rescue, that valiant group that would save rafters fleeing Castro's communist Cuba. They had interfered. They had, in fact, told Basulto, as I alleged, that I didn't have the expertise to represent him in trying to collect a $2 million judgment I got against Castro. Now, that's obviously not correct. I have that expertise more than they do. I'm a trial lawyer. There's nobody over at Judicial Watch who's really a trial lawyer. And Fitton himself is not a lawyer at all. I didn't even graduate from college at the time that I left to run for the U.S. Senate in 1993. 
excuse me, 2003, time flies. So I wanted to depose Fitton about what happened. And he's so scared of going under oath, particularly if I'm involved, I handled the case myself, that he had Judicial Watch's lawyer, Richard Driscoll, file an affidavit saying that he knew nothing about the case. Well, shortly thereafter, I took the deposition of Paul Orfanitas, another director at Judicial Watch. And in fact, he had said that Fitton had signed the legal representation agreement, which interfered with my relationship with Basulto to try to collect that judgment. It was Judicial Watch who was collecting it based upon, in my view, as I alleged, my having been defamed and disparaged with Basulto. Well, even after we found out that Fitton had signed that agreement, and in fact, he had lied under oath to the judge in a sworn affidavit, Kelly let him off the hook, didn't do anything. And why is that? Because a conservative judge like Kelly doesn't want to take on a prominent public interest group, doesn't want to take on a Tom Fitton or whatever, who, because he's been boosted at Fox News with various appearances and stuff like that, you know, would make the judge socially unacceptable in the conservative community. And I lost respect for Kelly. He's, again, if you appear in front of him, you'll, you'll think he's an extremely nice guy and has a very nice demeanor. But he's, not no, he's got no guts. And now he's going against the president that appointed him. OK, he's humiliated President Trump to save his own skin. And that's the nature of these judges, whether they're Democrat or Republican. They are political creatures in robes. I've always said we have a Cadillac of a legal system, but drunken drivers at the wheel. And I've lost further respect for Kelly. But the moral to the story is, and we have a judicial selection strike force at Freedom Watch, we need better judges on the bench. We need to find ways to get non-politicians in robes and not to have these people that rubber stamp what the establishment wants. And what even makes this the whole matter even more, I think, shocking is that the so-called conservative Fox News Network came out this week and supported CNN. Bill O'Reilly has written a story saying that Fox is not the same company that I used to work for. It's moving left. The sons of Rupert Murdoch who have taken over are liberals. And you can see it in Fox's daily programming, not so much in the nighttime, but if you look at during the day at what's being said and done, they're starting to have an anti-Trump cast to them, and they are starting to move left, much further left. And that's why you need to watch networks like Newsmax Television and others. Uh, there needs to be competition, because Fox thinks that it has a monopoly on the conservative community. Now, we know that Fox has boycotted a lot of people over the years. They've boycotted me under Roger Ailes because he did some unethical things. I also represent a woman by the name of Laurie Loon, who was sexually harassed by Fox while she was there under Ailes, had sexually harassed by Ailes, but covered up by Fox. Bill Shine, Suzanne Scott, who now runs the network, Shine is now, sadly, the communications director of President Trump. The president seems to do everything based upon what he sees on Fox, but I think the president's now learning a lesson that Fox is not loyal to him anymore. And I hope that it'll get him to hire people that will have his back, because no one has his back. I have his back. You patriots have his back. But the people in and around him do not have his back, by and large, and neither do the judges, apparently, that he's appointed. And this is why the country is in dire straits. Now, I'm going to shift to another topic right now, and I want you to read my column at WND.com tonight, and I'm going to have it posted on FreedomWatchUSA.org about Fox and Bill O'Reilly and, and how Fox no longer really represents conservatives who are people of faith or those kinds of things. The only, to the extent that it's still there, it's because of marketing, revenues, ad revenues, but it's, it's quickly fading as a defender of the conservative mu movement. But we have a situation right now where not only is the president being attacked over his appointment as the interim attorney general of Matthew Whitaker, and Judge Napolitano has just been ripping Whitaker to shreds on Fox. It gets back to that, too. So have others, including Shepard Smith and the rest of them over there, with some exceptions. But it's not just Whitaker, and it's not just the fact that the president apparently is under attack even by Fox, for firing Jeff Sessions, which was long overdue as attorney general. 
But now he's being asked to answer questions by Robert Mueller, written questions. Now, he should not answer those questions. That's even worse than going in orally for an interview, because at least if you're being interviewed orally, <clears throat> you'll be able to claim if you say something that's not quite right, that it was just a slip of the tongue or you didn't understand the question. But Mueller is setting the president up on so-called Russian collusion and obstruction of justice in the firing of former FBI director James Comey, because Mueller has a lot of information. And the president doesn't know everything that Mueller has, even though there's been leaks from Mueller, criminal grand jury leaks, and they continue to this day. And if he answers incorrectly in a sworn written statement, that's going to be proof positive, at least in terms of Mueller, that will give him license to bring a perjury indictment. Or, you know, at a minimum, include this in his soon to be issued report that is going to result in the impeachment of the president in the House of Representatives, guaranteed, as they say out West, guaranteed, and a trial in the U.S. Senate, which will grind this country to a halt and ultimately uh, will lead to this country falling into a state of greater disrepair, if not extinction, because this president is our last hope. Now, who do I blame for this, for leading the president down the primrose path? His lawyers. How did he hire his lawyers? Fox News. Jay Sekulow sees him on Fox News, says, OK, he should be my lawyer. Well, you know, Jay's a very nice person, but he's not a criminal defense lawyer. Rudy Giuliani going on Fox News drunk half the time going through a, a messy divorce who really can't focus on what's going on. They have led this president to the point of being taken in a cart to the guillotines, French Revolution style, or should we say leftist American Revolution style. So this is the problem. The president could have done many things over the last year and a half. He could have challenged Mueller's authority in court. He could have, uh, in fact, brought cases with regard to the illegal surveillance of his family. He could have declassified stuff with the steel dossier. He didn't do any of that on the advice of these worthless lawyers. So I urge the president to fire his lawyers, to move on, to take control. I'll be right back. Special Prosecutor, Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Fellow patriot and friends, the moral to the story is the president needs to defend himself, and he needs a lawyer or lawyers who actually have his back. He also needs to be careful in who he appoints to the federal bench. He can't take the advice of rhino establishment Republicans, and that's why Freedom Watch has a judicial selection strike force to help the president in that regard. Go to freedomwatchusa.org, support that Freedom Watch judicial selection strike force, join our Justice League, enlist for our citizens' grand juries that are on the horizon starting in January, and become a full-fledged member of our group of superheroes that are dead set on bringing the country back to the vision of our founding fathers. But let's talk about another outrage from my native state of Florida. We've been going through this election scandal, the latest in Florida, where miraculously Supervisor of Elections Brenda Snipes comes up with tens of thousands of votes that were never, ever, quote, counted. We have the same problem, in effect, in Palm Beach County, the two heavily Democrat counties in the south of the state, southern Florida. And of course, you know that I participated in the Bush v. Gore election challenge in the year 2000, which all the, went all the way to the Supreme Court. Well, you know, we've learned more about it this week. I had to file two lawsuits for fraud, corruption, and misconduct, which are working their way through the courts, because this election is not going to be over for a very long time. Even after Governor-elect Ron DeSantis is certified this Tuesday, it's still going to be challenged in the courts. And of course, there's now a hand recount underway for Governor Rick Scott. Now, we want to make sure that the person who actually won, won. I'm convinced that both DeSantis and Scott did win. And God forbid we ever had a Governor Gillum in the state of Florida. The guy is not just ultra left, socialist, borderline communist. He's not just an anti-Semite who was signed on with groups that hate Israel and and hate Jews, but he's a race baiter. He's anti-white. He's anti-anybody that 
will help get him elected to a higher office by dividing America. He's 100 times worse than Barack Obama. He has a lot of charisma, like so-called Minister Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam, and that's what's scary because he's so glib, he's so thinks he's so clever that he does have the ability to influence people. And therefore, that's why we need to make sure that the right person won in Florida, because I, frankly, I hate to see, and I'm talking from a personal perspective, not even a public interest perspective, to see someone like this turn Florida into something even worse than California when it comes to government. It's also going to raise taxes, and that's why people go to Florida, is because there's great freedom there. You can carry a gun. You can stand your ground. Uh, There are a lot of things in Florida that you can't do in other parts of the country because it's a southern state, right to work, those kinds of things. So this is why that case is so important. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, support our election cases. We need to restore election integrity, and we need to make sure that the people who actually won, in fact, become governor and senator. Now, why is that so important? Because our government's collapsing. We see what's happened in the House of Representatives. It's now being taken over by the likes of Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, Gerald Nadler, uh, the congressman from West Hollywood, Adam Schiff, and a whole bunch of others. And just this week, what's the Republicans' response to that? Who do they elect as minority leader to work with Pelosi but Kevin McCarthy? Now, here's a guy who, frankly, is so stupid I mean, he's not exactly high IQ, as the president would put it, that during the Benghazi investigations, he said this was just a political hit against the president, against a Hillary Clinton, excuse me, Freudian slip again. And then who's his number two? Liz Cheney. Okay, Liz Cheney, uh, Republican establishment. Why is she number two? She's a first term congressman because of the Cheney name. Well, you know what? The Cheney name is not worth much anymore. I mean, he's got blood on his hands over what happened in Iraq. He got us into a worthless war on on false pretenses that there were weapons of mass destruction. Frankly, Cheney's fortunate, along with W, that he hasn't been prosecuted for war crimes, in my opinion. So we need people who are real leaders in Congress, not people like Kevin McCarthy or Liz Cheney. We need new people. We need people like Mark Meadows or Jim uh, Jim Jacobs or, or, or others who are up there who actually have a spine, and there are very few. I might add, uh, maybe there's a handful. But with this leadership up there on Capitol Hill, everything's closing in on the president. He knows that. There are reports that, you know, he's been very upset this week. He's, you know, going around the White House, not like Nixon used to do, talking to pictures. On the other hand, really upset. So we need to come to his defense. Go to freedomwatchusa.org and join our Justice League to defend this great president. I'll be right back. And now, four words that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor, Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to freedomwatchusa.org and donate. I'm back from last week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman with Laura Loomer, who's an extremely brave individual. She's a true conservative, and she's Jewish and conservative, which is, frankly, not that rare anymore. But you wouldn't know that from seeing the Jewish left out there trying to destroy the president and everything else that he stands for. Uh, And I'm very concerned about that because I think most people in this country need to understand that Jewish people are not that way. They're not like the people who lead the ACLU or the Anti-Defamation League, who, in fact, side with Muslims and and, uh, Muslim terrorists over their own Jewish people, you know, one unbridled, unfettered, unfiltered immigration into this country, among many other things. But Laura, I want to have you back because, you know, you're so rare. Uh, You're a very special person in that, you know, you really have values and you're willing to risk your own self, for lack of a better word, for the betterment of this country. Let's go back and talk a little bit first about what's happening in Florida, because you came upon some evidence of fraud. I've got two lawsuits, and 
Palm Beach County and Broward County. We'll, we'll need testimony on that ultimately because this election battle is going to continue on for a long time, even if Governor DeSantis is certified this Tuesday. We have a hand re recount with Rick Scott, who wants to be the senator from Florida. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what you discovered down there in doing your investigation. Then we'll talk about our leftist media strike force and, the, and what we're up against and how you've been defamed and others like you have been defamed. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so on Sunday night, um, I had actually received a tip that an Avis employee at the Fort Lauderdale airport had found a box of provisional ballots in the back of a rental car. And as I was um, investigating this and as I was developing the story, I noticed that there was a heavy police presence in Fort Lauderdale. And then I got a notification on Twitter that said that the Broward County Sheriff's Office was responding to a bomb threat at the airport. So my mind put two and two together and I thought to myself, huh, well, what are the odds that uh, a box of provisional ballots were found in the back of a rental car at Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Airport, and then at the same time, there's a bomb threat. And I thought, wow, someone's trying to cover this up, or they're trying to divert attention from the ballot box. So I immediately went over to the airport, and luckily I had somebody inside Avis who snapped some pictures, and um, State Rep uh, Richard DiNapoli was able to provide me with videos and pictures and uh, long and behold, it was a box of provisional ballots, and the individual who was last driving the car was uh, named Noah Holloman. And Noah Holloman has a Broward.org email address. He's friends with Sheriff Scott Israel on Facebook, and he also has pictures on his Facebook of himself with Andrew Gillum. So, what does this mean? Well, you're not supposed to have provisional ballot boxes just chilling in the back of rental cars at the airport. It shows negligence on behalf of the supervisor of election. The boxes were from the Broward County Supervisor of Elections Office. And how do I know this? Well, Supervisor of Election Brenda Snipes was forced to actually hold a press conference on Monday to confirm my exclusive report, which went viral. I mean, Rush Limbaugh picked it up. It was all over Fox News. It was everywhere. And it sparked a lot of controversy because what are provisional ballots doing in the back of the rental car? And then the other aspect of this, too, is how much taxpayer dollars and resources was wasted, and why did the Broward County Sheriff, Scott Israel, allow for there to be this so-called bomb threat. He has to sign off on that, which walked down the airport. And of course, that cost the airport hundreds of thousands of dollars when they knew immediately that it was just a box of ballots. It seems like in a total abuse of power, total abuse of authority, and it needs to be investigated, of course. Well, and, uh, so, and Laura, just and Laura, just yesterday, Brenda Snipes sends over, obviously intentionally, the recount, the machine recount, to the Secretary of State two minutes after it's due. Governor Rick Scott got 800 more votes as a result of that recount, which don't count anymore because it was past the deadline. And, you know, this is just one example of the fraudulent and corrupt and otherwise dishonest games that are going on in Broward. And also there are similar games going on in Palm Beach. And this is a state that we both care about. We're both citizens of the state. It's a great state. And, but it, it bodes poorly for the United States in general, because what's going on in Florida is not unique. I mean, these same problems arise in New York and California, elsewhere. Uh, these paper ballots that they sent out, you can vote twice. You can send it in. They don't check when you go in to actually vote. The, you know, the individual that was at the polling place in Florida asked me if I had voted uh, with a paper ballot right. that was mailed to me. And I said, no, I told the truth. But I could have said... Uh, you know, that I that I hadn't received it, and, you know, and in fact voted with a paper ballot and voted there in person. So the same is true in California, where even illegals can vote if you have a, a driver's license. So it's not the Russians who are the threat to this country. It's our own election officials who are the threat. Exactly. And Brenda Snipes, of course, should have been removed by Governor Rick Scott two years ago when she destroyed ballots in the race between Debbie Watson and Schultz and Tim Canova. She should be in jail, right? And I well, you know what? During the press conference. Let's be can yeah, let's be candid about that one, okay? You know what? I'm a civil rights lawyer. I believe in rights to everybody, okay? But the way things are going in this country, if you're a minority and particularly if you're black, you're a protected species. Let's call it like it is. You can't fire them. Because if you do, you get accused of racism and that ends your political career. Scott knew he wanted to run for the US Senate, so he left her in there. But now it's coming back to burn him in the derriere. 
And uh, this is exactly uh, why everybody in this country should be treated equally. We can't worry about what person's color, religion or race is, you know, and, and we go through the same thing with our own people are, you know, the Jewish left. I mean, I tell you, 90 percent of the people have attacked me in my entire career from the Jewish left. And the reason for this is clear. There's a history, whether it's Karl Marx, Leon Trotsky, Saul Alinsky, I mean, you name it. These people are rabid leftists, okay? And that's why the American people need to know, particularly to avoid an anti-Semitic backlash, that this is not the way the Jewish people are. If it was, we wouldn't have Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel. 97% of the Israelis love President Trump. 97% hated Obama. They're not like the Jewish left in this country, particularly in Hollywood. And that's why we formed this coalition of the Jewish right that you and I and uh, Jason Goodman and others are putting together because we need to start pushing back. It's not just an embarrassment to the Jewish people. It's actually a destructive force against them because they support the Palestinians. They support radical uh, Islam. They support all kinds of things because they think that's cool and that will help advance their agenda. So right. I want to thank you for your participation in that. And I want you also to talk to me about what's been going on with you and the leftist media, many of which are our leftist brothers and sisters uh, who have defamed you. Tell us how you've been defamed recently. Tell us how you've been kicked off of Twitter. Tell us how you've been discriminated right. against because you're out there. You're actually doing something and you're not sitting there waiting to, you know, to take a punch. Yeah, so I've been shut down by Twitter a week prior to the midterm election. They suspended my account for a week, which pretty much paralyzed my ability to get content out because, you know, I'm a conservative journalist and it's wrong. I mean, I find it, I find the double standard in this country to be absolutely egregious. How today you have a judge who, fa who sided with Jim Acosta in his lawsuit against the White House when Trump takes away his press credential, claiming he has a First Amendment right. Well, <clears throat> what about conservatives? You know, the United States Constitution makes it so that everybody in this country, every United States citizen, has freedom of the press. Every U.S. citizen is technically a journalist. So I find it to be really strange and really discriminatory, truly, how these tech companies and media companies and politicians are willing to bend over backwards for Democrats. But when it comes to me, oh, no, we're going to ban you. Oh, we're going to kick you out. Oh, we're going to silence you. Oh, we're going to defame you. They don't care, right? I mean, it wasn't, it was only what, we're in uh, November now, in March, I remember calling you when I got arrested at the courthouse in Orlando. And I called you and I told you, oh my God, they're taking away my cell phone. This judge is unconstitutionally uh, confiscating my cell phone and they just stripped me of my press credentials and they're arresting me for asking a question in a press conference. What do I do? Do you remember that? And that was during the North Solomon trial. I mean, if this was Jim Acosta or any other Democrat, uh, you know, journalist, people would be going crazy flipping out. But why is there a double standard and why do people think it's OK for that to happen to people like me? Well, we're going to be bringing lawsuits on your behalf because Freedom Watch has a leftist mm -hmm. media strike force. We need to, you know, hit back. I've brought cases now for Sheriff Joe Arpaio against The New York Times in my private capacity for Chief Justice Roy Moore in Alabama. I brought them for myself. Uh, with regard to the social media companies that are censoring content of conservatives. You know, we've been static at YouTube now for months, and we're doing some really important stuff. And, our, you know, our subscribers don't go up, so they put a governor on that because they don't want us to have too much influence because the media is powerful. That's how our founding fathers coalesced the colonies to get them to wage a revolution against the tyrannical British crown. They don't want us to wage it even peacefully and legally. We have to be snuffed out. So watch what I do with Laura in terms of bringing lawsuits under our leftist media strike force, because we need to be heard. And, you know, other people need to be heard as well. Look, let me raise one other point. Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. I don't know what he did with regard to the Russians, this or that, doesn't matter. But the fact that he disclosed Edward Snowden's Disclosures, for lack of a better word, of mass illegal surveillance against the American people. And whatever you think of Assange, that was a great service to our Constitution. I later got two preliminary injunctions against Obama's NSA in joining this illegal surveillance, which has been used and trained against President Trump. It hasn't stopped, despite the preliminary injunctions I got. But now 
he's being threatened by the Justice Department deep state with being indicted. Apparently, there may be a sealed indictment in the Eastern District of Virginia. And this is sending a message, quite apart from Assange, for, to other people, don't come forward, don't challenge the government. We will have you indicted, convicted, and put away for life if we have to, uh, if you question what we do. And the only way that we can do that, one of the ways that we can do it peacefully and legally, aside from the cases that Freedom Watch is bringing and our citizens' grand juries, is through the media, by educating the masses, getting them to understand that this country's in dire jeopardy. So, uh, Laura, you are someone who, you know, is out there at the vanguard of challenging what's going on and exposing what's going on. So, you know, I, I thank you for that. And I, and I want to make sure that people understand how they can reach you, because you're getting to a great degree of prominence right now. And people are starting to take notice that Laura Loomer you know, is a revolutionary in, in the true sense of the word in, in a peaceful and nonviolent way, yet you're being silenced. Yeah, I'm being shut down in silence simply because I'm reporting the truth. And, you know, I'm a conservative journalist and that's what they're doing. And I'm being silenced and it affects me financially. Um, it affects me professionally and personally and even emotionally, like it's very stressful having to deal with this. And I don't think it's right. And we need to start suing because this is my business. This is my job. This is my profession. And really it's an issue of public accommodation in terms of discrimination as well, because if you're a journalist, right. And you go to school to be a journalist, like I did. Well, everywhere you work in this day and age requires you to use social media in order to uh, do your job or to be, be hired. And so if I can't have social media or if I'm shut down, well then I'm prevented from making an income. I also want you to play a role in our citizens' grand juries. You know, I put it off a bit because we've amassed a team in Orange County, California. We're going to be doing it in Florida and other states as well. In fact, years ago, I did have one in Ocala, Florida, uh, because it's very important that we, the people, enforce our system of justice. And Laura can be very instrumental in gathering the evidence to have people like Robert Mueller, Hillary and Bill Clinton, James Comey, and others indicted tried, convicted, and sentenced. And when we do that, and there's plenty of information out there, but we're going to need witnesses. You, we're going to need Jason Goodman, we're going to need other people in other walks of life to not only investigate, but put in front of that grand jury what you have uncovered, is that if we don't use these peaceful means, uh, this country is going to ignite in violence, and we don't want to see that. Uh, and right now, I think the right is actually more exercised than the left, and the right is better armed than the left. And it, when it breaks out, it's not going to be pretty for the left. And we don't want to see it happen to them. We don't want to see it happen to us. So we need to pursue that. I'm going to be right back, Laura. Thank you for coming on. We'll have you back again very soon. was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Patriots, friends, listeners of the show today, please... Share it with all of your friends and colleagues. Please get it out there on your internet sites. Uh, you can find it at RadioAmerica.com. It's it goes out uh, this Sunday, and it also goes out on podcast. So it's very important that we educate the American people because, as you can see, the so-called traditional conservative sources like Fox News are losing their nerve. They're turning left because of leadership and other reasons, other dynamics. They smell blood in the water with regard to President Trump, and they're fleeing the conservative boat like rats. And that's why when you hear the truth, uh, we need to get it out there, because we need American people to coalesce around us as our founding fathers got the colonies to do. And we need to fight back peacefully and legally. We don't have any help in the judiciary to speak of. I mean, occasionally the president wins a case at the Supreme Court, but it takes years to get there. Even the Supreme Court, as I talked about last week, bails out of issues that could affect their ju justices personally. 
They protect the elite. They'll never go against Hillary Clinton. They won't go against Obama. They won't go against anybody who's part of their club in Washington, D.C. And therefore, we need to do it for ourselves. So sign up and support with tax-deductible contributions our citizens' grand juries. The fact that we've been a little bit delayed here is the result of finances. And we have now gotten a good volunteer team in Orange County. But we still need that support. It's very expensive what we are doing on all fronts. And the lesson that's learned last Friday from Judge Michael J. Kelly uh, is one that you should not forget. This is a Trump-appointed judge, and he did not have the guts to simply affirm a totally legal decision of President Trump and his White House staff to ask CNN to send another reporter to White House press conferences and briefings. It had nothing to do with the First Amendment, but this judge ran for the exits because it could affect the leftist media going after him in the future. It could affect future appointments to the bench. could affect his standing in the Washington, D.C. swamp legal community and other communities to get into parties, to be part of the whole crowd. And this is what we don't need. Our founding fathers were not afraid to do what was right. They pledged their fortunes and risked their lives under God to form a new nation. We don't have people today, by and large, who will even risk their next meal from a lobbyist uh, in Washington, D.C. And the reason we now have Nancy Pelosi and her re- the rest of her band of criminals in charge of the House of Representatives poised to impeach the president, poised to start umpteen investigations with millions of subpoenas going out, to everybody under the sun in the conservative, libertarian, and people of faith community is because our Republican leaders failed us. And what did they do this week? They made it even worse. Kevin McCarthy is even worse than Paul Ryan. And that's saying a lot because Ryan stabbed the president in the back. He was two-faced. They accomplished little to nothing on Capitol Hill. They didn't have reform of Obamacare. They didn't have any immigration reform. They couldn't fund the wall. And that's why they were thrown out on their rear ends. And what do they come up with? This guy, Kevin McCarthy, this low IQ guy, very attractive guy from California, who was stupid enough to say at the height of the Benghazi hearings, when the Republicans controlled the House of Representatives, that it was all couched to harm Hillary Clinton politically because she was going to run for the president. Now, what kind of genius would say something like that? And then why would you put Liz Cheney as your number two? She's not even been a, a congressman for or a congresswoman for one day, but just because her name is Cheney, Cheney is a name that we want to forget about. He did some good things in the early part of his career, but you know what? He really screwed up with the Iraq war. You know, he was Uncle Dick to W. Okay, W followed what he said, and thousands of people have died for no reason. It destabilized the entire region. Iran became, uh, in fact, in charge of what was going on in Iraq. It gave rise to ISIS. Liz Cheney's the last person you need running as number two, uh, the House of Representatives on the Republican side. So these are the things you got to keep in mind. It's why we have to do it for ourselves. We the people. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. Freedomwatchusa.org. Sign up for our Justice League. You are the superheroes. You are the country. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. And most of all, God save America. I'll be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman.